Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another 1-6 scale unlicensed third party figure unboxing and review video. Now today we're going to be taking a look at the Atlas King of Atlantis figure by a company called Art Figures. Now I personally have never owned anything by Art Figures before, however I do know of a few releases that they've had in the past including their really awesome Judge Dread figure which I know a lot of people really do love. Not without its flaws, yes, and they tend to go a little bit more artistic on their designs however I do believe this Aquaman is going to be a really nice stand-in for a BVS Aquaman on your shelf I'm not aware of any other third-party companies that are either working on or have put out a BVS Aquaman now that being said this is still third-party and unlicensed that means art figures doesn't own the intellectual property rights to the character of Aquaman or indeed the likeness rights to Jason Momoa now if you are purchasing this I have included a link down in the description below Below to the place where I purchased mine from, being of course toyswandland.com. And while you're down there, why not hit that subscribe and bell notification icon so you're notified as soon as brand new content goes live on the channel. Either way, what we're gonna do now is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. And here we have the box art for Atlas King of Atlantis and we all know this is supposed to be a BVS representation of of course Aquaman. You can see that picture on the front of the box there that does have the really nice sort of cartoonified version of the character on there and I do believe that is actually a picture of the figure himself. You can see another image of the figure there on the side, some sort of film strip style motif on the back. The one thing that I do want to mention is this box feels really really high quality and it's not often that I can say that on third party figures. Usually they're all sorts of flimsy, but this one right here feels very, very sturdy, so I don't think you're going to have any issues in getting your figure to your doorstep. But either way, let's get him out here. I know I've been super excited, and a couple of people have been messaging me, asking me where on earth is this video, as well as, will the head sculpt from this figure work on the Hot Toys Aquaman figures? And I do intend to find out in this review, so definitely don't go anywhere. Now let's take a look at the figure himself. This is the first time that I've actually ever looked at this figure in in person and I have to say that body's pretty funky it's very very weird very very blocky it will have to remain to be seen whether or not this style of body for this figure is going to grow on me whether or not these armor pieces will fix this because it does look a little bit funky but for now just know that yeah it looks a little bit weird. The head sculpt, though, looks absolutely fantastic. This sort of comic style, sort of artistic representation doesn't really carry over at all to that head sculpt. That is Jason Momoa through and through. That hair is also absolutely fantastic, flowing upwards. I do plan on seeing if I can use this head sculpt on my orange-suited Aquaman. I think that would look really, really awesome, but we'll get a much closer look at this guy in just a second, let's take a look at all of the other bits and pieces. You can see a couple of hands, his armor pieces, a couple more hands, some alternate shoes it looks like, and then on the bottom of the box here, we do have a trident. Unlike that art by art trident, this doesn't feel like it is metal, it feels like a plastic piece. And yes, we will compare this to the Hot Toys Justice League Aquaman trident as well in just a second. Either way, what we're going to do now is get all of the accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. And here we have all of the bits and pieces that come with the Art Figures Atlas figure. Now, if you've been watching my reviews for some time, you're already gonna know that there is one key omission that I'm definitely going to mention, and that is the display base. How could they not have included a display base with how nice the packaging is? They've even paid the attention to detail to give us multiple hand pegs for all of the different hands, and even give us an all new body, head sculpt, all of that extra stuff, but no display base. I mean, come on, this is a really nice dynamic sculpt especially for the hair on this figure to not give him a dynamic display base maybe with the little aqua drone that was sort of hunting him in the underwater scene in BVS or even like a wave style display base like we saw from Hot Toys it's just criminal I don't know why they didn't do it it would have been a really nice piece to include with this Aquaman but either way let's take a look at the head sculpt first I detached it from the body so we can compare it to the solo movie Aquaman and of course the Justice League one in just a second they're literally just off screen but this one looks really really good I love the sort of dynamic look of the hair itself. The sculpt does appear to be different to the Hot Toys Aquaman head sculpt, so if you haven't liked what you've been getting so far, you want something a little bit more dynamic, this one hopefully will be your Aquaman head sculpt. Now this one right here is the solo movie Aquaman head sculpt. I know on camera they look very similar, but trust me, in person they are completely different. The nose is different, the eyebrows are different, the expression is also slightly different, the beard itself is very different, and of course the color and size of the eyes themselves. I like this 
this sort of light blue color. I do believe that's accurate to the movie because the Justice League also has that lighter blue style color of the eyes and they both look really, really good. Which hairstyle do I prefer? Well, I'm kind of leaning more towards this one right here. Whether or not this will work on your previous Aquaman figures, we will find out a little bit later in the video. Now let's take a look at the Trident itself. It is pretty basic. It's nicely painted, nicely sculpted, but unfortunately it is just a straight up recast of the Hot Toys one. It has the exact same markings throughout the entire thing. It does sort of appear like it's trying to copy the paintwork as well, but it doesn't quite match it. The Hot Toys one just has a bit more of a luster and it looks a little bit more metallic compared to the Art Figures one, which is the one right here. It still definitely does the job and it looks good enough, but the Hot Toys one definitely looks a little bit better. Now let's take a look at some of these pieces of armor. I really do like, I'm sure, the unintentional look of these love hearts that kind of look like fish scales. Very cool. I like the sort of softer nature of the straps, but not too soft that they don't maintain a nice level of detail and, of course, structure when you put it on the body. The paintwork on the entire thing, in fact, looks really, really good. It looks like a worn metal piece that has seen some seawater, which is really cool. This piece right here, same level of attention to detail. It looks amazing. I love this sort of knurling style effect. It does definitely look, as I said, like a piece of armor. These fins as well look absolutely outstanding. They are very sharp though, so do be careful when you are putting these on the figure. You'd also get a secondary pair of boots. They do have real laces. They do have a little bit of branding that says Caterpillar on there. A little bit naughty, I'm sure. Again, cat on the bottom, but definitely accurate to boots that we saw him wearing in the movie. So I'm really appreciative of the fact that they paid that attention to detail. And you do, of course, get a bunch of hands. As I said, you do get a bunch of extra wrist pegs. So you can pick your favorite hands, install the wrist pegs, and then when you go to swap them out, you don't have to worry about whether or not the hand pegs attach from the body, because I know that's definitely a right pain when you're just doing some light posing. You can also see a really nice sort of tattoo motif on the back there. But again, these hands do have that sort of polygon style texture to it. They are very blocky. It'll take a lot to convince someone to get this figure, I'm sure, but in hand, it definitely doesn't come across too insulting in terms of how weird it does look. Trust me, it doesn't look nearly as weird when you get it in hand as it does on camera. Either way, what we're going to do now is get the figure himself out here and take a closer look. And here we have Aquaman himself standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And I have to say, this guy actually doesn't look too bad. Yes, the body's a bit funky and we'll talk about it a little bit closer in just a second, but just standing there, it definitely has the bulk and the presence of Aquaman. And I really do like that head sculpt. I think it suits the body very nicely. I love the hair sort of flowing up. Technically, obviously, in the water, although your figure's gonna be posed dry in your display case, it still definitely has that effect, and I really do like the way it looks. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be using that solo Aquaman style display base with this figure that has that sort of wave effect. I think it would work really nicely for this figure if this particular head sculpt doesn't actually end up working on that figure, which of course we'll find out a little bit later in the video. Either way, what we're gonna do now is punch in and take a closer look at the details. And here we have Atlas himself up close and personal. And I have to say, that head sculpt suits the body very, very nicely. Although there is definitely a disconnect between the realism and real world look of this head sculpt right here and the rest of the body. We have to talk about how weird this thing does look. It's very sort of polygonal. It's got this weird sort of texture to it. I don't know if this is an entirely new custom body. I'm pretty sure it is. I don't know why they'd invest so much in making this weird sort of body, but let's talk about the positives first. It's very big, it's bulky, it's hefty, it feels like a super high quality, very, very sturdy figure, which I do like. All of the tattoos are all tampographed on there, which means they aren't just simply painted. They are definitely on there for the long haul, and they do look really good and fairly accurate to the movie. Don't get me wrong, I haven't gone back and looked at reference pictures side by side to this. In my mind's eye, this definitely does capture the look of BBS Aquaman, which is more than enough for me personally. Now let's talk about the bad. It looks a bit funky, yes, it does have a fairly limited range of motion, which you'll see a little bit later in the video, but then again, when we start to put the armor on this actual body itself, we'll have to wait and see what it turns out to look like, because I'm very, very curious as to whether or not it's going to save this look for this figure in my collection. Now, if you did have a bunch of art figures, I'm sure, in your collection, including their crossbones that they released with that weird funky look, I'm sure this would fit right in, but I personally have, of course, more realistic style Hot Toys figures, and I don't know 
if this is going to mesh very nicely alongside them. But again, when we bring out the other Aquaman figures, we will see when they are compared side by side. Either way, what we're going to do now is pan the camera down and give you a closer look at the rest of the outfit. And here we have the rest of the clothing. And as you can see, he just comes with a basic pair of jeans. This is, of course, his more casual look out of the two. I've also taken the liberty of swapping the shoes out to have the more casual style shoes. The one annoying thing is these laces. They are so stiff. And if you just touch them, they sort of go flying because of the scale of the lace. They are so incredibly tiny. I'm sure if you tuck them in around the back, it'll be totally fine. Or if you just left them undone, because of course, Jason Momoa as Aquaman doesn't really seem like the type to make sure his shoelaces are done up all the time so that could work perfectly for you as well now in terms of the jeans they are rather tight fitting which means again they are going to be a little bit restrictive when it comes to articulation but then again we'll see that in the articulation segment a little bit later in the video they are nicely dyed they've got a little bit a very slight amount of weathering on the front there it just brings them to life just a little bit would I have liked a little bit more of that weathering on the actual shoes themselves yeah absolutely some mud would have been really nice or even make them look a little bit wet because of course he's supposed to have been swimming around in these jeans. They look a little bit too fresh for my liking. But either way, what we're going to do now is get all of the armor on Aquaman and of course, take a closer look. And here we have Aquaman standing straight up and down wearing all of his armor and of course, holding his trident. And I think this looks really, really good. Does this save the figure for me personally? I was a little bit taken aback by the weird sort of styling of the body. And when you put the armor on him, yeah, it kind of does. It really brings the figure to life makes him stand out on the shelf. It adds a hell of a lot more gold, which really does help to have him stand out. And I think this works really nicely alongside the rest of the BVS crew and also alongside the other Aquaman figures, which you'll see in just a second. But yes, in summary, TLDR with the armor on, this definitely is a figure that I would recommend for anyone going down the BVS route or even anyone looking for a more casual version of Aquaman. And here we have the armored up look for Aquaman all put together. Now do make sure that you push this piece a little bit further up than I said in my little instructional clip. It does get caught on the bicep so you do have to sort of force it all the way up and it will kind of sit and click into place. But once you have the armor on there, I really do think it helps the overall look for this figure. It comes across very, very nicely. I love the weathered effect of the armor. Sort of blends very nicely into the scales of the tattoos on the body. Overall, I really like how this piece comes together when you pop all these bits and pieces on there. As I said, it kind of makes up that missing element for this figure and it really does sell the overall look to me. Now in terms of the actual rest of the pieces, this one also does slot on there quite nicely and when you do have the boots on there, they really look absolutely sensational. I don't know what kind of sort of haphazard look they were going for here, especially Zack Snyder when he designed this look, but either way, when you have it in figure form, I think it really does look quite awesome. Now to appease the many collectors out there that always ask me to do these weird head swap type ordeals, let's do some head swap. Here's what he looks like with his traditional head sculpt on. Here's what he looks like with the solo movie Aquaman head sculpt. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't push down all the way due to the nature of the hair pushing up against the body, but I still think that looks really, really good. And of course, by design, so too does the Justice League Aquaman head sculpt. It looks equally as good, in my opinion, on this body. The hair really does work, just drapes very nicely over the shoulders themselves. And for all those wondering, here we have the solo movie Aquaman body with the art figure's head sculpt on there. Unfortunately, due to the nature of the hair being bigger, they made the neck extremely thin, and they did that on the Justice League one as well. Also, the ball joint is a little bit wobbly. This, in my opinion, just simply doesn't work, unless you have him posed at a very, very dramatic angle in in which case, yeah, that looks pretty darn good, but from straight on, just with the head sitting naturally, yeah, I really don't think this works. Unfortunately, I was really hoping this would look good in the collection. And here we have that very same head sculpt on the Justice League body. Now, luckily, this neck is nicely cupped by the armor itself, so it doesn't look anywhere nearly as gappy. This head sculpt looks a lot better on this body, but still, it looks a little bit lollipop head syndrome because of the nature of the hair, because of the fact that it sits up very, very high on that really thin neck, it just just doesn't quite work. Yes, you could swap out the neck for a thicker one and maybe with a shorter ball joint peg and it would look a little bit better, but for me personally, I don't think I'm going to be rocking this look in 
in the display, but darn if it doesn't look good posed in a more dynamic pose like that one right there. And now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have King Atlas alongside Aquaman from, of course, Justice League. And I think this looks really good, although there is one key noticeable difference between the two, and you've probably already spotted it. That is the height. This art figure's figure appears to be a little bit small, and I don't know if that's more accurate to the height of Jason Momoa, that's why they've gone that way, and the Hot Toys one was a little bit oversized, which a couple of people actually did say, but either way, there is definitely a height difference between the two, even though they look really good, especially with the armor on the actual art figures one, standing alongside one another, the height is definitely something that's going to upset quite a few collectors when you put them on the same shelf. And here, of course, we have the solo movie Aquaman figure standing alongside Atlas himself. And I think this looks really, really good once again, although that height difference is still pretty prominent. Even though they really do, as I said, look quite good standing alongside one another, the looks are very, very drastically different. And that's what I really like about this Atlas figure. It's so weird and wacky and out there and the body proportions are so funky and polygonal that I think it really does kind of work as a whole once you pop the armor on there. That really is the key to making this thing look just that darn good and the head sculpt absolutely sells it but either way standing alongside the solo aquaman you do notice a difference between the sort of style of the body it also looks like the solo movie aquaman kind of has no neck but that could be down to the fact that he's looking a little bit too far forward either way they do look really really good on the same shelf if you're kind of building out the dceu looks for aquaman this is definitely one that you're going to need to pose alongside your justice league and of course your solo movie aquaman Aquaman. Now, just quickly going over articulation on Atlas, King of Atlantis. Now, this is my personal copy of this figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful with the joints. When you get yours in hand, I'm sure you can push it a little bit further than I'm willing to go. But either way, I've left all of the armor pieces off so we can see how the base body does move. And luckily, if you choose to display him like this, you're pretty much going to get unhindered motion because, of course, there's no outfit on him at all on the upper half. Now, in terms of the head sculpt itself, it is a rather forgiving ball joint, one of those traditional 1-6 scale double ball joints, although this neck piece, it is rubber, yes, but it is rather sturdy, so you're not going to get a whole bunch of motion, but it can definitely do the traditional sort of swimming upwards, and of course looking downwards poses just fine. Now in terms of the arms, they are pretty much unhindered, but they are very, very stiff, so do be careful when you are moving yours. They go forward pretty much unrestricted all the way around, of course. I don't really see a cut in the upper part of the arm there, so I might be at the limit of the arm range of motion upwards. Now in terms of the elbow again super stiff but only a single bend a swivel at the elbow as well it's not actually at the upper bicep and you do have a traditional one six scale joint at the hand itself you do also have two joints you've got one at the lower part of the waist there and one at the ab there and they do move independently of one another so you can definitely get a bunch of range of motion out of that now in terms of the legs with the jeans they are a little bit more hindered they go forward to about there they of course go out a fairly decent range you do have a pretty decent decent double bend at the actual knee. Again, it is very stiff, so everything is creaking. Looks like he's suffering from that bat butt that the BVS Batman had as well. Seems like a symptom of the figures that are meant to be in that line. You do also have a swivel at the upper thigh, and of course, a traditional 1-6 scale joint at the foot itself. Just wrapping up on the Art Figures Atlas release. Now, I'm really impressed with this figure from certain perspectives. When you freshly get him out of the box, he looks a bit weird. The body proportions aren't that good. They're very polygonal. There are a lot of sharp edges, not like a human body really would be. But when you put the armor on there, I think this thing really does come to life. It adds this sort of flair, this pop that it really did need to stand alongside the rest of the Hot Toys releases in this line. I think it really does work, but only with the armor on. That is my personal opinion. If you do like it without the armor, then all the power to you. But for me personally, I much prefer the armored up look. Now let's talk about that head sculpt. I really like what art figures have done here. They've created an all new Jason Momoa Aquaman head sculpt with the flowing hair. Something that I wish Hot Toys would have done themselves. It really adds something that I think was missing to the other Hot Toys Aquaman releases. Don't get me wrong, those head sculpts do look great on this body as well. But this one right here really does steal the show. It has that dynamic sort of nature that, as I said, really was missing from some of the previous releases. Thank goodness art figures went out and made something just 
a little bit different. Now, if you are looking to purchase this figure, I did purchase mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is down in the description below. Don't forget, this is a third-party unlicensed figure. This isn't a promotional video or anything like that. It's a review of a product that I purchased with my own money. That being said, while you're down in the description, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the brand new awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.